Okay, as I say, it's good to be with you. I just had to get up and close the uh, door of the living room in case it starts raining, because the rain on the conservatory makes rather a lot of noise, and I hope it doesn't uh, start raining and make it interfere with what I'm going to say. I want to start off with a story um, a few years ago, four in fact, that God told us quite clearly to buy a boat. I won't go into all the ways in which I knew this, but he confirmed it very definitely. That and so my wife and I bought a cruiser and we use it to take people out on the river and bless those who are going through hard times and uh, try and encourage them and uh, get them away from their situations. And God teaches us a lot of things through this boat. And one day we were in the marina, we were tied up to the pontoon and there were lots of, you can imagine it with lots of different boats all tied up at their pontoon. And uh, we got onto the boat, my, we started it up. And uh, my wife, who, the one who normally steers us out of, the, out of the marina, put the boat in gear and tried to go forward and nothing happened. And we thought, this is strange. And uh, I thought, well, I got out and couldn't see what, anything wrong. The engine sounded fine. Until all of a sudden, the gentleman in the boat next to us said, uh, do you realize you haven't undone the ropes at the back? And so we were still tied up to the pontoon at the back. And the ropes, of course, were holding us from going forward. And it was that little action that we thought, Lord, what are you trying to say to us through this? And he said to us, you can't go forward until you've let go. We had to let go of the ropes before we could move forward. And uh, there were one or two verses or a lot of verses in the Bible that sort of match that sort of story. In Philippians chapter two, uh, Paul says, my brothers, I know I have not yet appropriated everything, but I maintain my focus. So forget what lies behind me in the past. And I reach out with longing for what lies ahead. Yes, I press on towards my goal, which is to gain the prize that God has for me when he calls me home to heaven in unity with Christ Jesus. If you are mature in the way you view spiritual things, then you will think the same way. If you believe differently, God will bring the correction you need and make everything clear to you. At least continue to live in the good of what you've already received and do not slip back. And then in Hebrews chapter 12, it says, let us shrug off everything that comes against us and refuse every temptation to sin with which the devil wants to entangle us. Let us persevere in running the race in which God has entered us with our eyes fixed on Jesus, who's always ahead of us. Without him, we could not have faith, nor could we grow in faith. He gave us faith and he will perfect our faith. Look at the way he ran the race. He always aimed for the eternal joy that lay ahead of him, even though along the way he had to suffer to the point of death on the cross, regardless of the shame that was attached to such a death. He finished the race and is now seated in heaven at God's right hand. Yes, think of him who put up with continual opposition from sinful people. Then you will not go tired of the opposition you have to face and become discouraged. The Christian life is one of going forward. We need to keep on going forward with our eyes fixed on Jesus, Jesus who is the author and perfecter of our faith. But it's very easy to look back and hold on to things. Perhaps I ask the question, is there anything holding you back today? Is there any particular attitude or sin, anything that is got a grip on your life that is holding you back and stopping you going forward in Jesus. Paul says he forgets the past and he looks ahead to what lies, a, look forward to what lies ahead. There's no going forward without the blood of Jesus. We've just been singing about the cross of Jesus. Jesus dying on the cross is where he dealt with all our sin. He dealt with all our shame. He dealt with everything that would try to hold us back. 
so that we can go forward in him. Jesus has made the way, but so often we allow things to hold us back. And I think it's a challenge to all of us. If we are to keep going forward, we need to make sure we've undone those ropes, as it were. We need to have surrendered our lives afresh to Jesus. We've allowed him, his blood to wash us clean because without that precious blood, there's no going forward. And in these days of sort of lockdown, there's a great temptation to look back to what I call the good old days, what things used to be like. And I'm sure you're looking forward to getting back together again and meeting with each other. I know a lot of churches are in that sort of position. We're now coming into a position or time when God is wanting us to move forward, to press on and embrace the new things that he's doing. I believe we're coming into a new season. Even the nation is coming to a season when we're not going to have to wear face masks all the time. We're not going to have to have this uh, social distancing quite so much. Yes, I think we're still going to have to be a bit careful in the way we go about things. But we are going to come into a new season as a nation. And I think the church also is coming into a new season. A verse that's been quoted quite a lot during lockdown is in Isaiah chapter 43. And it says, do not remember the former things. In other words, don't look back. Behold, I do a new thing. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people I have formed for myself. They shall declare my praise. God wants us to be moving forward and moving into this new season. Season when we can begin to believe that God is going to do something new and something different amongst his people and I know there's a great expectation in the in the nation for a new season and for God to do new things an amusing thing happened to my wife and I this week we went round to the local bus stop to get the bus into Bedford well we did it three weeks ago and the bus never turned up so we thought oh dear that bus has got held up somewhere Never mind, we shall have to go back and try again later or go to town in the car. But the next week we went to the bus and the bus didn't turn up again. And we thought, strange. Oh, well, like last week, perhaps the bus has got held up. So this week we went round to the bus. And then I happened to look at my phone because I have an app on the phone which tells me when the bus is coming. And I suddenly realized that they had changed the timetables. And we'd been going for a bus that had been going 10 minutes earlier than we expected. So I felt God say to me quite clearly then, if you stick to the old timetable, you're gonna get left behind. See, God's doing a new thing and he wants us to go forward with him. Now, one of the new things that I think God is wanting us to do in this season is to have perhaps a new attitude towards our brothers and sisters, a new unity to come upon God's people. Now, Jesus, one of the last prayers he prayed before he went to the cross was written in, we can find it in John chapter 17. And it's a, it's a, it's a passage that's been with me for a very long time now. I think it was 40 years when God sort of revealed this to me and, I th and it's really struck a resonance with me. Jesus said, I do not pray only for them, but for all those who in the future will believe in me through the truth they shall proclaim. I pray that they will be one in faith and love, Father, in the same way that you and I are always in complete harmony and agreement. You in me and I in you. May they continue to live in us so that the world may believe who I am, the one you sent to be their saviour and Lord. 
The glory you gave me, I have given to all who believe in me, that they may be united in faith and love, reflecting the unity that is between us as father and son. I will live in them as you live in me. Yes, I want them to come to a place of being completely united in faith and love, to demonstrate to the world that you sent me and that you have loved them in the same way that you have loved me while I've been here on the earth. That was Jesus's prayer just before he went to the cross, that his people be one. And that's you and me. And I was shocked to read recently that there are about 40,000 different denominations in the world. The Christian body is the most divided body of anything in the world. And it's quite a shock when you think that Jesus prayed that his people be one. Now that word unity is a, perhaps a controversial word. It doesn't mean uniformity. It doesn't mean we're all going to be the same. Jesus makes it very clear that there are different parts of the body. But he does want us to have a good attitude towards one another, to have a right relationship with one another. In Ephesians, at the beginning of verse, uh, chapter four, it says, this involves remaining humble and gentle, being patient and sensitive to the needs of others out of your love for them. Do everything you can to maintain the unity you have with other believers in the power of the spirit by remaining at peace with them. For there is one body of Christ and only one Holy Spirit. And we all share in the one hope to which we were called in Christ. There is only one Lord and we all share in the same faith in him. There is only one baptism into Christ, only one God and Father of us all. He is over all of us, he works through all of us, and his life is in all of us. All your brothers and sisters are people that Jesus died for. All my brothers and sisters are people that Jesus died for. And I find it quite challenging sometimes when I think I've been quite critical sometimes of my brothers and sisters because they haven't always believed exactly as I believed or done what exactly what I want. And it's very easy for us to have judgmental hearts. In Ephesians again, it says, do not speak in an impure or critical way instead of mouthing unclean or negative things. Speak in a way that will encourage and benefit others because you are addressing their needs. When we look at other Christians and other churches, it's very easy to allow things to get in the way. Pride is one of those things. In Romans 12, 16, it, says, it is an essential witness that we are seen to live in harmony with one another. Such unity is destroyed by pride. So we will not be proud, but willing to show God's love to anyone, regardless of who or what they are. And we will not be conceited. It's very easy to think that I'm better than somebody else. Or my church is better than your church. Or we have a great sort of form of worship that's better than your worship or all sorts of things we allow to get in the way and it's a barrier to the unity that we have with our brothers and sisters. And this is a time when I think God is really wanting to break down the barriers between his people. And that's why Jesus prayed that his people be one that the world might believe. I wonder how the world actually sees the church. Very often, I'm sure it sees it as a body that squabbles with each other over this thing or that thing. And we don't show the unity that Jesus prayed for. Having said that, we mustn't allow secondary things to get in the way, but the primary thing is that Jesus died on the cross for all of us. He shed his blood for all of us. And that is the primary thing that we must keep in, keep in mind, as it were. But not allow what I call peripheral things to always get in the way. 
unfortunately, that is often the case. And uh, Carolyn and I, who work for, on, for Hope in Bedfordshire, the part of Hope in Bedfordshire, which seeks to bring unity or get, have churches working together in unity, it doesn't always happen. And so this is something that we pray for very much. And God has really challenged me about my attitude towards other Christians. It's easy to write off a whole bunch of people because they don't believe quite the same that I believe, even though they might have that central core that Jesus died on the cross for them. And I think these are days when God is trying to bring his people together in a new sort of unity. We need to rid ourselves of every negative thing, as it says in Ephesians, being bitter in our attitudes, being angry and resentful. Do not get into disputes with others. Do not slander others or have malicious attitudes towards them. And it's one of those, that whole word attitude is something that God's been really challenging me and my wife about, our attitude towards other Christians. And other churches that might have annoyed us because they haven't done this or that. But God is wanting to break down all these barriers. He gave me a sort of a picture of a great big reservoir with a great big dam in front of it. And that reservoir represents obviously water inside there, which is God's blessing. But there's a great big dam that's holding that blessing back. And what is that blessing? It is the disunity that there is between people within God's body. But hallelujah, we are beginning to see lots of cracks in that dam. And I'm talking about the town of Bedford, really. We're seeing churches beginning to come together. Now, you as a fellowship, I know, support Hope Spaces in town, which is seeking to be not one church doing something, but the body of Christ coming together to serve the town. And if you don't know what Hope Spaces is, it's a sort of big shop that we have right in the middle of town next to Costa Coffee. And people come into this space, they are prayed for, they're encouraged to seek God. Many have actually come to know Jesus through the ministry of that shop. And it was a space that God, int we intended to have it open for two weeks. Now it's been open for 16 months, I think, something like that, 16 months. I mean, it just shows that God's plans are far bigger than our plans and his ways and our plans. If you haven't been in the Hope Spaces, when you're next in town, pop in and give us a call. See what's there. But it's a place where people can come and experience the presence of God. But more than that, it's where, a place where God's people come together from different churches. We have hosts, people serving God from all lots of different churches, all loving Jesus, all believing the truth that Jesus died on the cross for them but giving up their denominational differences, as it were, and even perhaps some theological differences and coming to serve God in that place. And it's a place where God is definitely blessing us. And God wants to bless this town. We want to see that dam broken. Just to encourage you, something happened about three weeks ago. I was sitting in my garden when I had a phone call and I'd never spoken or hadn't spoken for a very, very long time, I mean, literally years, with the person on the other end of this phone call. And his name was Jonathan Oliendo, who has a, he's a pastor from London. And he phoned me up. Now, why he phoned me up, well, it was a, quite a mystery, but he, nevertheless, he did. Now, Jonathan, in, nine, in 2013, I think it was, hired Wembley Stadium for a day of prayer for the nation. And he had about 40,000 people come to Wembley Stadium to pray for the, the nation. And I was there, and it was a most exciting day. I guess next Wednesday would be probably just as exciting, or not quite as exciting at Wembley, but uh, that's beside the point. It was a real day of seeking God and praying for our nation. 
And this Pentecost Sunday, a few weeks ago, he had a Zoom prayer meeting at which 50,000 people came from all over the country to pray for this nation. And they came from Ireland, Northern Ireland, Wales, Scotland, England, 50,000 people. You can go on YouTube and see it. And here was this man phoning me up and saying, I want to have a chat with you. And I thought, this is very strange. But he said, let me tell you why I want to talk to you. He said, on a Thursday, we've been having a Zoom prayer meeting for pastors. But we've decided to stop that now. And on Thursday evenings, we're going to have a prayer meeting for just anybody who wants to come and pray for the nation. He said there'll be about 100 people on this Zoom meeting. This is the first one we're going to be having. So we have decided to focus our prayer on Bedford, which is why I'm speaking to you. And I thought to myself, of all the towns in the whole of the country that they could have chosen to centre their prayer on, and they chose Bedford. So I thought to myself, God, you're certainly doing something and you want to do something in our town. And uh, we had, I, he asked me to get one or two people to join him on the, on the Zoom meeting, and we did. And three or four of us were allowed to speak about the church in Bedford and pray for the church in Bedford. And then a hundred people all over Zoom unmuted themselves and prayed just for Bedford. And this went on for about well over half an hour. And I thought, this is amazing. God is at work in our town. And I think one of the reasons why is that we want to see the walls come down. We want to see the dam broken. We want to see that flood of blessing come to our town. And I believe that Hope Spaces, because it is demonstrating God's people coming together as one, is very much a place of blessing where God is going to use. I want to encourage you with that and to say, keep on praying for what God is doing in our town. It may not be quite what you expect. God always surprises us. But I believe that God is at work. He is doing a new thing. And he wants us to reach out and embrace the new thing that he's doing. And that means, of course, letting go of the old. As I started, we can't go forward unless we let go of the past. We let go, let go of all the things that might hold us back, all the things that might hinder us. And a lot of that is our attitudes. I know it's my attitude, it's my critical spirit. And I've had to repent before God and say, Lord, forgive me. I just thank you for the blood of Jesus that is there to cleanse us from every sin. So, Perhaps I ask you today, is there anything that's holding you back? Anything that you need to bring to the cross to allow Jesus to cleanse you so that you can go forward? But also be encouraged that God is at work in our town. And uh, please keep praying. Thank you for the support that you give Hope Spaces. We've got your cross in the shop that, that we've loaned. We've got chairs that you've loaned us. And uh, I know you blessed us in many other ways in home spaces. But uh, thank you very much for that. But may God bless you all. And uh, thank you for listening. Shall we pray? Is that? Lord, first of all, we want to thank you for that precious blood of Jesus. Lord, none of us would be here without your death on the cross. Lord, we would still be walking in darkness. Lord, our sin would be dragging us back. Thank you, Jesus, that you came to take our sin. You came to take our punishment to set us free. And Lord, we want to walk in that freedom that you have won for us. And Lord, if there's anything that's holding us back, then I ask, Pray for your Holy Spirit to just reveal it to each one of us so that we can go forward and embrace all that you're doing in these days. Thank you that you are always on the move. 
Thank you that you want us to go forward. Thank you, Jesus, that you have new things in store for us. But Lord, to enjoy those new things, to embrace those new things, we do have to let go of the old. So help us to embrace that new thing that you're doing. Lord, I want to just pray for my brothers and sisters here this morning. Lord, I pray for your blessing upon them now. Lord, I just pray that you would encourage them and that you would build them up in your faith. And most importantly, Lord, you would keep us focused on you because you are way above anybody else. You are the most important thing in all our lives, the most important person in all our lives. And Jesus, we just want to give you the praise and the glory. Thank you for all that you've done. And thank you for all that you're going to do. Amen. Thank you.